DNA could help catch rapists and killers, but should police be able to use it? Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson shows us how an emerging investigative technique is cracking cold cases across the country and why privacy advocates are worried. This one right here, that is actually my great grandma. For millions of Americans, genealogy is a hobby. Says he's a first to second cousin. For Cindy Sturmel. It tells me who I am. It is a path to finding her biological father. I look at this honestly at least, you know, 10 times a day. So you're into this. Oh yeah. Five years ago, Cindy bought her first DNA testing kit which turned her saliva into a genetic fingerprint that could be compared with millions of others around the world. If they're a match to me, it will automatically show up. Since then, she's built a tree of relatives she never knew she had. All because of one of these kits. Because All because of, of one of these kits. Companies like Ancestry, 23andMe, MyHeritage, and Family Tree have now collected DNA for more than 27 million people, and that data is solving more than just family mysteries. We're solving crimes. In October... Over the years, we had many ups and downs. The Ozaki County Sheriff's Office identified Philip Cross as the man who'd raped and killed 18-year-old Tracy Hammerberg in 1984. Somebody still cared. News that Tracy's younger sister Jennifer waited 35 years to hear. I want to say a big thank you to them for never giving up on her. It was a good day here at the lab. Sarah Zastro Arkins is the Wisconsin Crime Lab analyst who made the final comparison, confirming that Cross's DNA matched the evidence found on Tracy's body. There were some high fives. My heart was racing. But it's how investigators got to cross in the first place that has the criminal justice system buzzing. It's amazing. And privacy advocates nervous. We have to have some kind of protections right now. We have none. From coast to coast, law enforcement agencies are catching rapists and killers with the help of forensic genetic genealogy. It's still in the very early stages, but the potential is great. A technique pioneered by C.C. Moore, who turned a hobby into a groundbreaking profession. Became very quickly considered an expert because there were no experts. Because DNA recombines from generation to generation, Moore says people who are related share blocks of DNA, and she found a way to measure how much. I think it's 232 centimorgans would be a considered a second cousin. So police can now use crime scene DNA to search public databases for relatives, then traditional genealogy to drill down to a specific suspect. We had to build out the tree and then come back down again to look for anybody that would be considered a second cousin. There's wide divide in my community about whether this is an appropriate use of what we created. Until recently, police could only compare crime scene evidence to a database of convicted criminals called CODIS. And which are only available to law enforcement. Which is only available to law enforcement. The DNA from the Tracy's suspect has been in there for years with no hits. Now these store-bought tests have created massive databases of DNA from people who may have never committed a crime. What privacy protections are out there? Ray Delosto is a criminal defense attorney and former legal director for the Wisconsin ACLU. This is you. This is your code. And the potential uses of that and misuses are great. The three largest DNA testing companies say they will not share your data with law enforcement without a court order, while Family Tree DNA does allow police to have access if they ask permission first. There is no national standard. But more than a million customers of those companies have voluntarily uploaded their genetic information to another public database called GEDmatch to help with family research. And many had no idea police could use it too. Not that we're trying to hide anyone who is a murderer or a rapist and should be apprehended, but what is the other potential? Shouldn't there be some regulation of this? In the face of mounting criticism, GEDmatch changed its privacy policy earlier this year to require that users opt in if they want to give police access to their DNA. And the U.S. Department of Justice issued an interim policy on forensic genealogy that calls for reasonable privacy protections. It's better than no policy. We're going to have a bumpy road going forward. People go both ways on it. Cindy Sturmel didn't get into genealogy to solve violent crimes. I'm here yeah. to try and find my family. But if police use her DNA to take a killer off the street, she figures 
all the better. For me personally, I wouldn't have a problem with it because I have nothing to hide. Now, the U.S. Department of Justice's interim policy on forensic genetic genealogy just took effect on November 1st. It lays out requirements for use of the technique by law enforcement. Most notably, it can only be used in cases involving violent crimes like rape and homicide. It must have a local prosecutor's approval and the information obtained cannot be used to determine health related information. The Department of Justice is hoping to have a permanent policy in place sometime in 2020. So if I get one of these kits for Christmas and I send in my DNA, does yeah. that automatically give police the ability to search it? Not necessarily and actually most likely not, depending on which company's kit you're using. Family Tree DNA, as we said, cooperates with law enforcement. Ancestry, 23andMe and MyHeritage say they will not give police access without a court order. They'll resist it if they can. But that could be exactly where this is headed because earlier this year, a judge in Florida approved a search warrant giving police access to the full GEDmatch database, even though now 90% of those users have not opted in for law enforcement access. There are some DNA policy experts who say that could be a game changer in favor of forensic genealogy but potentially a concern for those who don't want their DNA used for those purposes. Yeah, just like all personal information, there's benefits and risks. It's your decision if you want to send that in. And right? this is kind of the beginning, like the wild west of all of this, so there's more to come. All right, all right Brian, thanks for opening our eyes once again. All right. Well, still ahead here on